This is my book review of God Can't, How to Believe in God and Love After Abuse, Tragedy, and Other Evils by Thomas J. Ord. This book was published January 2nd, 2019 by Sacred Sage Press. The thesis of this book, and generally the idea that goes throughout the entire book, is the idea that God can't prevent evil. I believe this is a very, very interesting idea, and the entire book expands on this concept by explaining many things that God cannot do and God needs from humanity in order to work as a religion as a whole. Going along with each one of the chapters individually, we'll go over a brief summary of each one. The first one, as I said before, is God can't prevent evil. This is the idea that by himself he cannot prevent evil and he needs humanity's help in order to push towards this greater good. This also idea goes by that God is not fully known, he is not omnipotent, and knowing that he cannot help is a clear, it clears any obstacles regarding a relationship with God. The second chapter is that God feels our pain. This is the idea that pain is part of the human experience, and God cannot prevent that. This also builds upon this with that God feels our pain, that humanity feels, and he cares that we are in pain. He also wishes that we could be free from pain, but understands that it is not physically possible. And it is important that we suffer together because suffering is part of the human experience. That is how we find companionship. The third chapter is God works to heal. God is constantly trying to help those that are in pain. God neither caused the pain nor allowed it. And even if the pain cannot be removed, it, he is constantly trying to heal it to the best of his ability. Overall, he is gently, he is not a dominating deity. He's gently pushing humanity into the correct direction. The next chapter is God squeezes good from evil. This builds upon the idea that since God cannot control or stop evil, that he's trying to get the best out of the bad situation. He also, it's explained that good usually comes from harm. And that destruction and pain are just a natural part of the experience. And God is not trying to protect us from that. He's just trying to heal us after it happens. Uh, Thomas J. Ward also builds upon this idea that not everything happens for a reason. I, I personally disagree with this. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in fate. I'm not a very, I'm not necessarily a very religious person, but I always believe that something, ha everything happens for a reason. So I, I really push against that as a concept. Um, I always believe that we as he, like we can like we have a predisposed amount of things that happen to us, and we push us in that direction. The final main chapter is that God needs our cooperation. There are three views of God, the no God, which is the atheistic uh, ideology, uh, the all God, where it's like an all powerful deity that can actually help and change everything, and the conventional view of God, which is the primarily Christian based view where you know he, can, he controls certain aspects of your life, but overall he lets you do as you will. There's also the condescending idea of God, which, which builds him up to be more than he actually is. Uh, it's very common. Overall, this chapter is all about, like, God is not a dictator. He needs our cooperation in order, he needs our help. But almost the entire thesis of this specific chapter is a concept called indispensable love energy. As God requires love and compassion, he's not, he doesn't require perfection that's unobtainable. He just requires companionship. Uh, overall, I did enjoy the book. I had a few issues regarding it specifically. Uh, again, the idea of fate not existing. I'm, uh, that, that's, almost, that, that's almost in complete contradiction with my beliefs. Uh, overall, though, I mean, th again, there's a lot of interesting ideas in this book. Uh, I feel like it'd be very controversial to an average Christian audience uh, because there's all these ideas that, again, are, again, as that, as that was almost incomplete contradiction of my beliefs, a lot of this would be a complete contradiction of many conventional Christian beliefs uh, pushed back, which I, again, I'm not entirely sure of how the book was received regarding that, but I, I assume there would be a lot of problems. Um, although he, he writes in a very matter of fact, almost simple way that I feel like a lot of people would at least be, it'll be easy to pick up and easy to read. Uh, I, I managed to finish the book in, in, in just a few hours, for example. Um, so, I mean, it's a very easy book to read overall. Um, when it regards to how it affects my worldview, uh, I don't believe it really does. If anything, it, it almost kind of pushes me more towards the the spiritual, but overall uh, non-Christian. I always call myself a non-denominational theist. Uh, I believe there's a God, but I don't believe in a, specific, a particular God necessarily. Uh, and it kind of pushes that view because it shows that the only religion that I have any prior um, 
relation with, not knowledge. I mean, I, I'm very, I, I consider myself very aware of other religions, but uh, Christianity is what the one religion that my family is and that they mostly have tried to push me to, towards. And this book almost reinforced the idea by believing that God is not this omnipotent deity, that he has these limitations. And I believe that it almost kind of reinforces my, uh, conf the, my beliefs in that way. Um, so overall, that's my opinion on that. But overall, that is my opinion. And at the end of the day, as long as this book, different interpretations can come up with the same ideas.